Hey, Robert with Fiddleback Forge here for another Fiddleback Friday. Uh, in honor of today being Friday the 13th for December 2019, we're going to do 13 Fiddleback Forge knives in this batch. And we're going to add one in for Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knife Works, uh, obviously who's an apprentice here at Fiddleback Forge and a good friend. Uh, does awesome, amazing work as you have seen before. Uh, the one for this week is no exception. Uh, happens to be in Bloodwood, which I know at least one of you out there really, really loves. Uh, you know you are. So we're going to show you those in hand so you know what's going to show up in your mailbox next week. So no surprises there. I'm going to talk a little bit more about each model as we go. Uh, if there's any information that you'd like to be included uh, in the video demos, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, but keep in mind also that before this video comes out every Friday morning on our blog post on the website under news and events, uh, is going to be the Fiddleback Forge Fiddleback Friday preview and you can see uh, a couple of pictures there of each one as well as all the specs including blade length overall length that kind of thing so you can always look at those there as well as seeing uh, a couple of pictures to give you a better idea of what you got coming as well uh, and then we also post a, a video or we post a preview rather with photos on blade form our blade form as well so keep in mind these knives are going to go live at 9 p.m eastern standard time tonight on the website fiddlebackforge.com uh, so make sure you are there promptly because these do go pretty quickly especially this time of year um, they go very very fast as an added bonus for the rest of this month through December 31st. I've talked with Andy. We have come up with uh, a way to tell you guys how much we appreciate your support all year. Uh, we're gonna do, if you buy one Fiddleback Forge knife, you can get the second Fiddleback Forge knife for 20% off. Um, that's pretty much unheard of. We only do that every once in a while. We'll put a discount like that out there, uh, but it is not the norm. Uh, we didn't do a Black Friday this year or anything like that, but what we really wanted to do was show you that we really appreciate all the support for this year. Uh, so now would be the time if you're wanting multiple Fiddleback Forge knives or if you want to gift one to somebody uh, for Christmas, as long as you order by December 20th, they'll get it in time uh, for Christmas. So uh, thank you guys for all the support this year. Let's go ahead and get the in-hand started. So let's start off with the JB Knifeworks model for this week. This is the Shady Baby, which you've seen here before. Not to be confused with the Big Shady that we had last week. This one's in Bloodwood, black liners, yellow pinstripes, as you can see there. Uh, this one is in CPM 154. Starts off at about 764 on the stock. Really beautiful texture done. Bloodwood is always a favorite. Let's see if I can get the Chatoyance to show up. You can see it changing color a little bit. But with all the lighting that we have, it um, doesn't show it as much as a single light source would, uh, like if you went outside with it. So keep that in mind. It does have more chatoyance than you see here on the video. As you can see, it's very comfortable in hand. Really nice size for the grip. Four fingers there. Um, I wear a large John Extra Large glove, as many of you already know. And that is the Shady Baby from Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knifeworks, an apprentice here at Fiddleback Forge. Very nice knife. Very good use of that mosaic pen as well. Really cool. Cool, cool knife. I like that one a lot. Moving on to the fiddlebacks. Let's do the little guys first. We've got uh, this one right here is a neck muck. Now you may think this was a part of the nest muck design, um, but it was actually patterned after the camp muck, which obviously is inspired by the nest muck shape. Um, but this is literally a shrunken down version of the large size camp muck. So as you can see, very small, three finger design. The indexing is really good on this, so you do know where it is in hand all the time. It really rests right there on your pinky very comfortably when you're handling it. Super cool little knife. Uh, this is wingy, black liners, white pinstripes on that. Starts out with a one eighth inch A2 steel. Really cool little, little knife. Uh, Good for utility, good for daily carry. Uh, it's definitely not going to intimidate anybody if you pull this out to open a box at work. So, really cool little knife there. Um, does go really well on a Diomedes pocket sheath, the little uh, the Reaper style, which is uh, kind of a coffin shaped. It goes really good with that. Another small model is the Pygmy. 
and this one is an OD canvas. Um, now this design series was actually opened up. This is the smallest of the three. Uh, its brothers are the Shaman and the Chief. Um, you'll notice that there are no liners. Very simple handle shape, very simple design on the blade as well. Uh, this was meant to be uh, a very easily accessible uh, for any budget uh, for a handmade fiddleback forge knife. Uh, that's why these designs were done. Super awesome uh, shape for utility. Uh, you can definitely get up on there. It's very comfortable in hand. You always know where it is. Really cool, really cool sizing and shape. Obviously only a three finger design. Again, not an intimidating knife if you need something to pocket carry uh, for work. And again, one of the uh, Diomedes sheaths work well with that one. Actually, the, uh, the uh, Reaper series sheaths of that one work well as well. So this one is the Minnow. Really cool little knife. You don't see these very often anymore. Uh, this is that teal denim micarta. Really cool stuff. Black bolster black liners really nice simple shaped knife also uh, really great for pocket and daily carry it's got a little longer blade than the other two i just showed you uh, so if you like a little bit more blade that one's going to be the better option for you um, really cool again three finger design super comfortable in hand uh, this one's got a little bit more of a guard uh, than the pygmy did so you can see that it's a little more confidence inspiring for some if you're uh, put off by the guardless designs. But this is indexed really well right here along with that finger guard, it really ramps good. Um, so you can tell where it is pretty much no matter how you're holding it. Really cool little knife. Again, that's the Minnow. Another small one that is based on one of our very popular models. Uh, this is based on the bush boot, but this is a smaller size. This is a baby boot. So again, about a three finger design on that. Really locks your hand in place the way that the curve of the handle is there on the bottom. It just really locks in. It's a very sexy shape, uh, that arching shape. Uh, this one does not have a swedge. Some of them you see uh, will have a swedge, especially on the big brother on the uh, bush boot. So this baby boot has the um, freckled bone linen that we've been using a lot of that's really awesome. You can actually see the specs, the natural specs in the material. And it really shapes out super nice as you can see. Natural liners, blue pinstripes, really good combo with that color. Really makes it pop and stand out. And that starts out as 332 A2 steel. Really beautiful little knife. Again, not super intimidating, but large enough to be very functional. Find a place to put that one there. And on to the big brothers. Well, I'm going to go with the slightly big brother or slightly bigger brother next here. We're going to start off with a Carta shaped blade. This is the Bushcraft Carta. Uh, it's very closely related to the ED Carta that you may have seen before. Uh, the difference is the handle is a little bit longer to give you a full four finger uh, grip on there. It gives you a lot of leverage uh, for that shorter Carta style blade. Really cool design on that. Black canvas micarta. You can see that this is one of the uh, more heavily contrasting pieces of black canvas that you'll see, uh, which is really awesome on this knife, the way that it shapes out. You can see all the detail. Uh, it's black liners, white pinstripes on that. Tapered tang starts out as eighth inch A2. Really awesome knife. That Carta style blade for a daily carry. Really awesome if you've got to do any kind of precision cutting or whatnot. Um, this one in particular um, obviously is, is meant to be a crossover into the bushcraft world. If you're doing um, precision woodworking, that kind of thing, it's going to be a really great knife. So that's the bushcraft Carta. Find a place to put her. Right there looks good. Next up is going to be a knife that was actually, you heard me mention Diomedes Industries for um, sheaths earlier that you can get over on Fiddleback Outpost. Um, I mention him again now because he actually designed this knife. This is the Arte. Um, this is a, a model that's been around several years now. It's one of the best sellers for Fiddleback Forge. 
uh, for sure. Uh, Jason at Diomedes Industries actually designed this. Um, if I remember correctly, it was like a design contest that Andy had put out. Um, and Jason won that contest years ago. Um, and they designed this knife together. <clears throat> Obviously, it's very heavily on the Andy side of design as far as handle ergonomics and everything goes. It's a, it's a very friendly design. It feels good no matter how you hold it. Four inch blade on there. It's really, really good for bushcrafting. The tip design being a leaf point, is gonna be really good for drilling and that kind of thing as well. Uh, it's got a good belly on it, so it's good for cutting, slicing, those kind of movements as well. This one's a maple burl, and it's a gorgeous piece of it too. Really nice detail on that. Uh, again, this piece has some chatoyance to it where it changes in the light. I don't know if you'll catch it because of our light sources, uh, but out in the sun, this thing is really gonna dance really well. Uh, eighth inch A2 on that. As you can see, taper tang, black liners, orange pinstripes. Really gorgeous knife. Really nice on the mosaic pin right there on the fifth pin as well. So really nice knife. If you want a very, very functional bushcraft knife that's absolutely gorgeous in this case, um, that's very ergonomic, no hot spots, uh, all day use kind of thing. That is the one you're going to want. And another beautiful one coming up is the CR1 for this week. Woo! Did you see that, guys? I almost dropped it. Caught it, though. It's mad skills, mad skills. But you could see from that little demo of me almost dropping it because I'm holding it so daintily trying to show it to you. Um, how the shape of this handle really just self-corrects and it always goes in your hand the way it's supposed to. Um, so accidentally showed you a design feature there. Um, what's really cool about this is once you do have it in your hand and you're not holding it like that where you're trying to show people, um, it really locks in. So once you get your pinky right there and that, and that indention, the, remember the ring finger goes on the hump on this design for control and these two fingers lock in it's just really awesome. So if you're doing, especially slicing cuts or pull cuts, um, that thing is not going anywhere. It's very, very inspiring, confidence inspiring in the hand, really awesome knife. So this is Ruby Maple on the bolsters, um, black Camus micarta on the rest of the scales there, uh, black liners as well. This one starts out as A2 and one eighth of an inch and a skeletonized full tang, uh, not tapered. Really good balance on that. Spalting turned out really awesome on the on the blade, as you can see. The grind turned out great. Just a beautiful knife, really well designed. CR and the CR1 name comes from Carl Recksteiner. Uh, this knife was designed after a knife that Andy bought from Carl um, that inspired this shape. Obviously, it's been heavily fiddlebacked, so it's uh, make no mistake, it is definitely a fiddleback knife uh, with a lot of inspiration there from Carl Recksteiner. Now, next up is a very classic design if you're doing woodworking, light bush crafting, um, or if you want something on the slightly larger size um, for a pocket carry EDC, um, or even belt carry EDC, this one goes nicely on either. This one is called the Handyman, and this was an Osage Orange, which I personally absolutely love because it starts out this almost a canary yellow color wood, uh, but over time, as you use it, it gets darker and deeper brown and more of the features of the wood start to come out. So it basically patinas, uh, kind of like the blade steel wheel on this being A2. Um, so the more you use it, the more it'll actually create more character and more story of where it's been and what it's done. Um, just a really cool knife. You can see a relatively high grind on that. Uh, this is eighth inch on the stock on that. Natural liners, blue pinstripes, really cool knife. It's got the uh, Trinity pin out right there, as you can see on the natural pins. Just a really beautiful knife. Lots of character. All those lines and everything you can see there are going to get darker and deeper. It's going to just absolutely be even more beautiful as it ages. It's a really cool as it picks up the oils from your hands and the oils from the sheath and everything else. It'd be really awesome. So next up, might be the bell of the ball this week as far as what we've seen so far as far as comments go on the previews this is the monarch so the monarch a lot of times you'll see a swedge grind right here on the top 
Uh, this one obviously does not have that. Um, I think it's perfect uh, without it for this particular knife because of the way the spalting and everything turned out on it. Um, sorry about the lint there. I'll try to get that off. So this is Box Elder Burl, as you can tell. We're calling it Gold Rush Box Elder Burl because of the color variation. Natural on the liners, white pen stripes. 1 8 inch A2 and taper tang, as you can see there really beautifully done this is a gorgeous piece of handle material nice mosaic pen complement just a beautiful beautiful knife i like the monarch a lot if you like handles that are that are on the thicker side uh, as far as fuller in the hand um, this is going to be the one that you really like um, typically people with with kind of fatter sausage like fingers really like this handle uh, because it's a little bit on the shorter side it is a full four fingered grip uh, but the shape of it is just more full. Uh, people with thick fingers tend to really like this, and also people with small hands really like this. But I don't fall into either one of those categories, and I really like it too. So that really says something about the handle design and handle shape. Um, really comfortable, really ins confidence inspiring, because once you get a grip on it, you really don't feel like it's gonna go anywhere, even if it's wet. So really nice indexing there, really cool design. The big brother to the Esquire. Awesome knife. So expect this one to go really super fast uh, tonight because there are a lot of eyeballs on it. So if you want it, you better be there at nine o'clock without hesitation because someone else will beat you to it if you're not fast. So next up, perennial favorite, of course, one of the original designs that Andy Roy ever did for Fiddleback Forge. This is the bush finger, and that is tangerine burlap, which is absolutely gorgeous. Really cool color, really cool variations in it. Very three-dimensional looking, uh, but obviously very smooth on the finish. Don't worry, it's still grippy enough to be functional, but very smooth, very comfortable, no matter how you're holding it. Bush finger is a favorite of mine in this size range, uh, four inch blade on that. Eighth inch A2, as you can see, natural and white on the pinstripes. Really awesome knife. It is a favorite of Fiddleback Forge fans for a reason, for sure. So skeletonized full tang on that, not tapered. Convex grind, as are most of Andy's knives. Pretty cool. Now we've got another finger as Phil at the shop likes to say, in the same handle material. But this handle material, even though it's the same, uh, is a little bit different in color. So let's see if I can get them up here without banging them on each other too much there. You can see the color variation. Uh, both are tangerine burlap, but this one is the lady finger, the old school lady finger to be exact. And it's a little bit more of a salmon on the color um, compared to the other one that has a little bit more orange to it. So the old school lady finger, if you're wondering what makes it an old school lady finger versus a lady finger, the old school lady finger has a slightly taller blade. Uh, this one happens to have a very high grind on it, which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you don't see that very much. Um, and the regular lady finger has a finger guard right here uh, that recesses or that comes out a little bit so the blade recesses in a little bit uh, just for a little bit more confidence inspiring for people who get nervous about not having a guard but the old school lady finger does not have that so uh, if you're confident in your knife skills uh, this one is going to be the one that you're probably going to like the most uh, especially if you do any kind of uh, food prep or whatnot in the field because uh, you don't have to worry about that finger guard getting in the way of what you're trying to do so uh, again, Trinity pin out on this, natural liners, white pen stripes. This one is 332 A2 steel. So that super high grind on there, plus the 332, this thing is uh, very slicey for a bushcraft knife. Four inch blade on these. Really cool knife. This is, this is definitely one of my favorites of this batch. I like the lady finger. I just like the way it feels. It's a very slender handle, of course. Really nice. So that's that one. Running out of places to put them where you guys can see them. 
All right, a couple more. We're almost there. This one is a classic fiddleback forge design, of course. Um, so this one's got a little bit more of a story uh, as far as origin goes. So this is the Kephart model, um, as you've seen many times before. Uh, now this is not a traditional Kephart or a copy of an original Kephart. This is Andy's take on what the spirit of the Kephart was supposed to be. So basic, the basic size and what the functionality was supposed to be and what Andy felt was the better way to approach it. So uh, the blade shape is not as rounded of a leaf shape as the traditional cup art, it's more of a spear point. Uh, the handle is also not as, as uh, round and bulbous as the original cup art as well. Uh, it's got a lot more shape to it. Really nice on this. So you're wondering what the rest of the story is. Well, uh, we did a field knife collection uh, with this that's still available. Uh, you can still pick one up. Um, that have S35VN blades, which if you're familiar with Fiddleback Forge, we don't do many of these. So the Mintex are pretty much the only version of those that we do. So what this is, is it is a Midtech blade that we've put a custom handle on. And by we, Andy and the guys at the shop, not me, I'm just showing it to you. So natural canvas micarta, which is actually the same natural canvas as was on the Midtex, but the texture is different. Since these are finished out custom, uh, this has more of the smooth texture, whereas the Midtex are very, very uh, granular, uh, crenulated, I believe is the right word for it. Uh, natural liners on this, natural pins, quarter inch pins, not the one eighth pins. Uh, and that's that Tiffany blue liner. So it's very subtle. It almost looks like it's white. Um, but it is the Tiffany blue, which is a really nice complement to the steel on this. So like I said, this is S35VN. So if you're looking for a fiddleback and stainless, this is the ticket right here. So eighth inch on that, skeletonized full tang. And unlike most fiddleback forge knives that are convex grinds, because this is a mid-tex, this, this is a flat grind. Uh, and it's also got a stonewashed finish on there. So you don't have to worry much about getting scratches and that kind of thing on there. Just a really rugged, tough blade, but with a little bit added sexy with the custom shaped handle on there. Which is also the reason it doesn't have a bullseye lanyard tube. It has the regular lanyard tube uh, because it's using that stock blade. So, last but definitely not least, oh wait, before that, just know that the, uh, the cap art comes with a sheath as well. So, because it is part of the Midtech lines, it comes with the, one of the sheaths. The Midtechs are the only ones that come with sheaths. If you didn't know, now you know. All right, last but not least, let me go ahead and show you the size difference here. So this little, little guy right here was the Pygmy, right? Well, this is the same design family, and this is a brand new model. It's probably not going to be made again unless we get a lot of de unless we get a lot of demand for it. Uh, this was just Andy uh, testing his design chops and doing something a little unusual. Um, so he basically took the Chief, which is the large version of that family, and stretched it out and made a longer blade on it. So uh, this one is called the Big Kahuna, and like I said, this may be the only one that ever gets made. As far as I know, there are no plans to make any more. Um, but if there's high enough demand from you guys, possibly that might change. This is in that classic handle combo for Fiddleback Forge. Osage orange, natural liners, blue pinstripes, which are absolutely gorgeous with that, that Osage. And keep in mind, like I said with the Osage on the other knife, it will get darker and darker as you use it. So pretty, pretty cool. So we've had requests before in the past with our machetes, uh, which obviously the smallest size is a 12 inch machete, uh, to do something more in the nine inch range or something like that. I don't remember what the blade length on this is exactly. Check the website um, under news and events, the, the latest blog post. Uh, it'll show you preview photos of this and all the knives uh, and give you specs of all of them, uh, blade length, overall length. I uh, don't have that in front of me, but uh, just go to the blog post and you'll see that. But we've had a lot of requests for something like a machete in that range. Uh, this is about as close as you're going to get to it, other than a model that we've made before called the Bishop, which we haven't made in quite some time. Um, but the Big Kahuna is a one-off as of right now, and it is pretty damn awesome. 
So it's one eighth inch A2 skeletonized full tang, convex grind, and badass. All right, so there's your selection for Fiddleback Friday on Friday the 13th for December. Uh, remember that discount, uh, the 20% off on your second Fiddleback Forge knife. It's equal or lesser value, all that good stuff. And it does go through the end of the month. Uh, and it's automatic at checkout, so you don't need any kind of code or anything like that. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the 13 Fiddleback Forge knives that we showed you, along with the Joey Berry knife as well. Bloodwood's killer. Um, Joey always does a great job on those as well. Um, yeah, that's really all I've got. Uh, by Christmas shipping, um, if you want something shipped for Christmas, you're going to have to make sure that you get it ordered uh, before Friday of next week on December 20th. And if you're ordering closer to the 20th or on the 20th, go ahead and pick priority shipping uh, to make sure it has enough time to get to you before Christmas because uh, the post office is in a big rush in that time of year uh, and we're doing the best we can to get those out in time. But just give yourself a buffer if at all possible. If you're not worried so much about the Christmas gift aspect, uh, like I said, that discount is running all the way through the end of the month, December 31st. So you've got plenty of time to uh, maybe get what you didn't get for Christmas, but get what you really want, if you know what I mean. So uh, until next week, guys, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. We'll see you then.